All right. Looks like we're live and up and running. So let me switch layouts and get everything set up and we will jump right into some bad opinions. All right, we've got the BGM loaded. We are running through the combined BGM playlist of all the songs that have come out so far. And we'll leave the volume there and make sure everyone can hear it and we're good to go. And let me check something on, on the stream real quick. I want to make sure the the browser windows readable for a sort of intro what we're we're going to be ranking today. Okay, that should be fine. Weird. If I go to my own stream page, I have to watch an ad just to look at my own stream. That's kind of unusual. All right. So what are we doing today? It has been a hot minute since I've sat down and done some tier list rankings here on the channel. That wasn't necessarily by design. Since I do like talking through my opinions on stuff, even if it gets me in trouble. But one of my favorite things to talk about, as many people have probably noticed by now, is food. I, like all other Earth-based life forms, have to eat. And so I've done a lot of ranking of foods. We've done, thinking back over the last year, we've done types of food. We had fruits and vegetables. That might have been the last one I did. We've done fast food. We've done candy. Kind of a mix. And so today I picked up a couple interesting tier lists off of the main site and I'll, I'll shout out the people that created these when we go through them. Uh, but this first one that we're doing I thought would be fun and, and this one just popped up as I was searching around for food related tier lists. This is a meat tier list. And I, I thought it would be fun to, to run through this one. It's not terribly long. There's a, there's a, there's a decent mix of terrestrial meats and seafoods here. Um, but I think it'll, it'll be good. It's also meat products too. I see hot dogs on here. And so we'll be ranking these according to my personal preference and taste and shout outs to Kazik, Kazik on Twitter for creating this one. And let's see, I have these, we're going to go S tier as best, like usual. I had E on here, but I don't usually rank things at E. So we're going to go S, descending A, B, C, D, and F, and then haven't tried. There's a few on here that I haven't tried. But I could speak to most of them. And then we will see where everything falls. So first up on the list of meats to rank. One that... I'm sure no one's surprised. Bacon. The internet loves bacon. And with good reason, because bacon is delicious. Probably not terribly surprising, but I'm putting bacon on S tier. I actually don't eat it super often, because I only buy it every once in a while, and then I'll eat it for a stretch and then not buy it again for a bit. But bacon is great for breakfasts. I don't really eat breakfasts except for other meals in the day. But it's also pretty great to cook with. And I usually buy uncured bacon, try to cut out on some of the preservatives and consume less of that. But crisp bacon is good. In fact, yesterday I made something with dinner that had bacon in it. I made roasted Brussels sprouts with chopped bacon and balsamic vinegar. And that was good. 
So in addition to just being tasty, bacon's a pretty versatile cooking ingredient. You can use it in all sorts of stuff. Bacon wrapped shrimp, a recipe my brother shared with me many years ago. Bacon wrapped scallops. All that stuff's pretty pretty high tier, so I'm putting bacon on S tier because of its versatility and its deliciousness. Next up, beef. And for the general classifications of meat types here, I think we can assume they mean, you know, all forms of using this unless it's specified otherwise, otherwise like pork, pork, bacon's a certain type of pork. So it's probably going to be listed out separately. Where's pork on here? Yeah, down here. Hey, small E's here. Small E says, hello, what are you doing? Well, small E, I am doing a tier list today and we are ranking foods and food related things. This first one that we're doing is ranking meats. And this is a mix of regular terrestrial meat and seafood from the looks of it and meat products. So I'll be providing my, my terrible opinions on, on meat products. And we will, we will see what everyone thinks. Hey, first time chat from GTIGIJHS says I'm here in the stream out of the stream out of respect for my father. Well, welcome. Welcome to the chill stream. We are ranking meat products. Uh, yeah, let me grab the the link. Uh, small E. Good idea. Um, let's see where if I exit this, I think it gives me a share option. Let's see if this works. I'll drop this in the chat. So feel free to create your own and follow along as we run through. All right, let's go back to presentation mode. Okay, so beef, it's what's for dinner. That was the American slogan a long time ago, right? So we, we are going to classify this as beef, all ways of preparing it unless specified otherwise on here, like steaks. Uh, I'm going to say right now, Beef is going to go God tier, actually above bacon. Bacon is really good and I like it, but it wouldn't be the top of my list. This is probably going to be an interesting spread, but beef is one of my favorite things to prepare and eat. In fact, when I made roasted Brussels sprouts with bacon for dinner last night, it was alongside a steak. I wanted to try out this method of doing pan seared steaks with uh, like an herb and garlic basted butter. And I see people on YouTube doing it in all the cooking videos and cooking shows. So I wanted to try it, so I bought a couple small sirloins and, and tried it. It turned out well. Uh, I used a sprig of rosemary from my, my rosemary plant and some crushed cloves of garlic. And then I just seared off the, the steaks and then dropped some butter in the pan along with the herbs and garlic. And then just doused everything in, in butter and then let them rest. What I would do differently next time would be getting even higher heat. So I went about medium high, decently high. I think I'd want to go like full blast high heat and get a better sear because the, the color was okay, but it could have got a better crust and sear on the steak. So I would do that differently next time, but it turned out fine. I like my steaks rare to medium, medium rare. But yeah, beef, all manner of things. This is going to include probably burgers. Yeah, I don't see ground beef on here. Burgers like shredded beef, all sorts of marinated stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. I like my cows. Next up, we've got catfish. First seafood entry on the list here. And I have lived in a region that eats a lot of catfish and is really common in restaurants. I don't anymore, but I did for a stretch. And catfish is interesting. I like seafood a lot, which we'll see as we sort of move through the list here. But 
catfish is different from your other more common lighter skinned or lighter flesh fish like cod uh, I see swordfish on the list down here but it's kind of in between because catfish depending on how you prepare it is usually pretty tender but it also has a lot of natural oil I know it turns some people off because it could come off as greasy but it's got kind of a, a decent amount of natural oil to it but a good texture good flavor I'm gonna put catfish on B tier I have not had that in a long time because I no longer live in an area that consumes a lot of catfish but it, it's good stuff for such a strange mud dwelling like bottom feeder fish it, it's good stuff I used to have it pan, pan fried or, or deep fried a couple joints that I used to go to good stuff not my first choice for fish but, but catfish is pretty good Next up, we have Chicken, the lord of poultry, as it were. Probably one, the most common, one of the most common types of, of meat consumed. Smalley says, I'm done. Okay, um, send it to me on, on Discord. You can send it to me on Discord or Twitter. I always tell people, if you make your own tier list and want to compare, send it to me on either Twitter or Discord, and uh, we could see how everything shakes out. Obviously, because I'm, I'm narrating and, and talking through my thoughts on these, it takes me longer to do one of these as opposed to I was just sliding everything into the rankings. But I'm sure everyone's will be different. So, yeah, feel free to, to hit me up. But chicken, chicken is a tough one for me because I eat a lot of chicken, too. Uh, I probably eat more chicken than I do beef. Just because it's a little bit easier to prepare. But I'm going to have to put it above beef. Mostly because I, I cook a lot more variety of things with chicken than I do with beef. Beef I tend to go for steaks or burgers. Uh, sometimes I'll do like stew meat in chilies. Um, but chicken, you get fried chicken, roasted chicken... I like to do Parmesan crusted chicken for salads, grilled. I think I, I do a lot more with chicken, and I think it's it's better for you with a leaner meat. Now, full disclosure, I'm pretty particular on the type of chicken I eat. I don't really cook a lot with chicken breast. I have no problem eating it, especially if it's prepared well, but it's very difficult to do correctly. So my go-to is dark meat on chicken. Most of the stuff that I make are using chicken thighs. I usually buy the boneless, skinless ones, so I don't have to bother deboning them myself. But whether it's fried, crusted, roasted, or whatever, I usually go to chicken thighs. And it always throws me back to that debate the Trash Taste Boys had about you know bone-in wings versus boneless and the whole discussion of how two of the guys couldn't tell the difference between light and dark meat chicken. I will never accept the opinion that there's no difference. Dark meat is softer, more juicy because of the fat content, and is vastly superior than white meat. White meat has its place and can be cooked in a lot of different ways, but I'm not going to say that it, there's no difference because just in moisture levels and texture and taste, dark meat all the way. It turns out way better. It's harder to screw up, too. Uh, Smalley says, after I put almost everything on, never tried it, made it easier, and... Smalley asks, let's be honest, what's the chance you had on eating horse? I have not had horse, so we could we could separate the ones out the list here that I've never had. There's a few. Uh, I have not had escargot. I've not had snails. I've not tried frog. I've not tried the flesh of one soggy froggy. Uh, let's see. Quail, I've had quail eggs, but not quail itself. I've not tried rabbit or rattlesnake or horse. Look at the rest of the ones on here. Horse, I know, is pretty common in Japan. If I ever get over there, or when I get over there, I definitely want to try it. It's called Sakura Niku. I've heard it's pretty good. Hey, Sour Lad's here. What's up, Sour Lad? How's it going? 
How are you doing today? Alright, I got you on, uh... I got you on Discord, Smalley. Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll take a look at it, it uh, later. Sorry, that's as good, and you... Oh, I'm good, man. We're, we're talking about food. One of my favorite things in the world. And expressing all my opinions, which are going to get me canceled. We are ranking meats. The first tier list I pulled up for food is a bunch of different meats and a couple meat products. And so uh, I'll put the tier list back in the chat again. Uh, Smallies here chilling. Uh, if you want to create your own, then send, send me your thoughts. It is here. We've ranked chicken, beef, bacon, and catfish so far. Uh, but yeah, I think I've got everything in the list. I've never tried. I've never tried goose. I we could eat goose. That's got to be really similar to like a duck, right? Goose is just a big, angrier version of a duck. All right, let's move on. Next up, clams. I do not like clams. I don't have a problem eating them in stuff, but, uh... It's pretty common on this coast, on the west coast, for people to have steamed clams. And that's okay. I don't actively avoid them. They're really not my first choice in mollusk and shellfish. So I'm going to put them on low C tier, probably at the very bottom. Clams, to me, I, I don't, I'm just not a big fan of them straight up. But like clam chowder, aces, great stuff. Um, linguine and clam sauce, all day long. Just clams straight up. Cooked and steamed, not my first choice. Uh, I've had a really good recipe that I, I will eat occasionally if people make it, where you take the whole steamer clams, you rinse them, you know, get the sand out, and you steam them in uh, miso soup with like ginger and garlic, and you slow simmer them in there. That's pretty good too. I, I'll, I'll eat that, but usually not my first choice. I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty meh on, on clams, like out of the shell but in stuff perfectly fine smally says also hot dog it's made of several different types of meat depending on the brand you buy spam is made of pork scraps unless you eat spam turkey right so we're, we're gonna just lump the meat products into their own category as opposed to differentiating what's in them but i do have opinions on both of those so we will definitely get there uh, smally says i'm from nyc calamari is lord common than salmon for some reason they're inconsistent oh more common more common gotcha hey microphone is sing has we need a hydrate and a stretch micro in the chat shout out to micro welcome thank you for the hydrate and stretch oh, I got to clear out redeems let me do that before I forget I usually do that once every few streams. I try and avoid having a big log of, of redeems that you folks have, have tossed at me for points. But yeah, Micro, welcome to the stream. Our first stop on the order of getting canceled. We're ranking meats. Um, every time someone new jumps on, um, someone remind me to, to paste in the tier list. If you want to make your own, make your own. Send it to me on Twitter or, or Discord. And we can compare notes and see who's got the worst opinions. Okay. So clams, C tier, pretty meh in general. Uh, next up, we got cod. First fish on, the, oh, second fish on the list after catfish. Cod is kind of like the, the vanilla of most common fishes to me. Not offensive, but wouldn't really jump out at me and, and knock my socks off. Tastes pretty good. Baked pretty good fried or pan fried it and I think it's I think it's versatility puts it a little bit higher than catfish but I don't eat cod super often but it's super easy to, to cook and in fact what puts it up here on the list even though it's not distinguished here black cod like a good miso black cod is god tier if we were ranking dishes that would be up probably on s tier it's expensive black cod is for some reason absurdly expensive so i very rarely eat it but a good baked miso black cod 
is very very good so that as part of the overall umbrella of cod gets it up there pretty high on my list that is that is fantastic stuff Smalley says it's not good nor bad unless you made it terrible then he done messed up yeah cod is pretty forgiving you can overcook it and dry it out which is kind of difficult to do with fish well it's pretty resilient you know you can you can make it in a lot of different ways and it'll usually turn out all right but yeah, I'm, I'm I'm arguing on the hill of, of black cod. Black cod is great. I just wish it wasn't so expensive. Sarlat says, not sure what it's called, but when you when you wrap fish with tin foil, lemon, and onions, and cook it, yes, um, that's pretty much like a, a baked or steamed style of fish. Um, I know a good recipe for like a salmon fillet that has cubed butter, sliced lemons, and onions. And then you wrap the whole thing in foil like you're talking about and then you just cook it in the oven. And that's my favorite way to, to eat salmon from preparation outside of smoked salmon. And uh, we'll get to salmon on the list here too. It's down here. But yeah, that way of cooking fish in general is really good. You, you, it's almost brainless, you know. You wrap it in foil to steam it, keep the moisture in. Throw in some good seasonings and some stuff for it to kind of simmer in the oven. And it cooks pretty quick too. Fish is, is very fast. You have to be careful not to cook it too long. But uh, yeah, that, that's a really solid way to make it. It's essentially like a baked steamed fish. Very, very good. And so folks who might not have been here on stream hearing me talk about food, uh, because I used to be a cook, you'll hear me talking a lot about preparation and maybe talking about recipes in addition to just my thoughts on food types like this. And so... I'll try and mix stuff in without wasting too much time and giving my opinions because usually my opinion is driven by what I can cook with the different types of stuff on this list. Smalley says, also people talk about food with little to no understanding about chemistry. Some type talked about colors of salmon. If it's white, it means it's bad for you, which is not true because salmon is red because of the amount of shrimp they ate. Yeah, the the opinions and and quote-unquote analysis doesn't necessarily always get grounded in fact versus subjective opinions uh although i think the the general just general ruling on the fact that high concentrations of mercury in certain types of fish and seafood is something you want to not consume often micro says shoot i feel like i wouldn't do much in this tier list because i haven't tried most of these is it okay if i skip 89 percent of the list all right so the the one i linked goes from s tier to f tier with e tier in between i repurposed this list to cut out e tier because i think it's kind of a moot moot rating and so it goes from d to f and then the last one is haven't tried and uh i know small e was saying earlier that uh they haven't tried some of these on here and that's fine so i would take the bottom tier and make it into haven't tried and put everything you haven't tried in that list and rank everything else that's perfectly fine I understand some of these are a bit more out there, you know, like if you live in a country that doesn't get rattlesnake, chances are you're not going to have tried rattlesnake. We've got rattlesnakes in my state here in in America, and I've never tried rattlesnake. So, yeah, separate everything you haven't tried out and rank the ones you have and see where they fall. And that's perfectly okay. And uh, Smalley says prep is very important to cook meats. Yep. Prep, handling, and temperature. Probably the three big things to keep in mind when, when cooking all the different types of meats. Chicken has the highest safe cooking temperature, I believe, compared to beef, pork, and all the other ones. You don't really, you, you don't do medium rare chicken. Now, I know they do chicken sashimi in Japan. People I know that have gone there and tried it said it tastes good. Every single one of them has gotten salmonella every single person I know who's tried it. And I think it's because people from outside Japan don't have conditioned digestive systems to fend it off versus people who've been eating it over there for decades are okay. As interesting as that sounds, chicken sashimi, I don't think I would do. Like everyone I know who's tried it said it was good, but they all got sick. And I'm, I'm not down to ruin a vacation with like a week being sick. All right, so that was cod. Let's, uh, let's keep moving here. Next up, crab. And this is a catch-all for all types of crab. And a couple caveats on there. 
I think Crab won S tier. I'm putting that above. Uh, I'm putting it below, mm, below beef. Above bacon. Bacon is good, but it's not going to be the be all end all. It's going to get pushed further down S tier. But crab is probably one of my favorite types of shellfish to eat. I have eaten a lot of Dungeness crab, which is usually one of the more common ones. My favorite is king crab legs. And also very expensive. I don't get to eat that very often because it's never on sale. And I don't have a Costco membership, so I can't go and get like the really good price for king crab legs. But when there is a special occasion, you know, I'll, I'll go and... Or if I go to some place that's got a special occasion going on, we'll, we'll get some crab, king crab legs. But crab's fantastic. Hot take of the day, and we'll get to it later. I think crab trumps lobster in in all cases. I like lobster a lot, but crab all day long. Steamed is really easy to prepare too. You just steamed, get some butter, get some clock rackers, and you're good to go. Uh, Smalley says, example, horse, you're very unlikely to eat unless you ate Ikea meatballs at that time, horse meat controversy. Oh, they'd put horse meat in their, their meatballs. Yeah, I imagine that wouldn't go over very well. I've heard horse is, is like a lot of other types of, of meat, kind of gamey and very lean. You know, horses are not fat. They're not fat creatures. So I've heard that horse meat is, is a little bit more lean and tough. But kind of similar to beef and venison, from what I've heard. I've never tried it. I definitely would. Sakura Niku in Japan is raw, though. It's a raw meat. Or I think it's commonly eaten raw. It's not only eaten raw. But I'd still try it. That sounds interesting. Next up, another poultry. This one is one I also don't eat super often. Duck. Duck found in a lot of Asian cuisine. I'm going to put duck on A tier. This will probably get bumped down the list a little bit more and more, but duck is great. It is a oilier and fattier and a little bit gamier type of poultry meat compared to chicken or turkey, but it is full of flavor, and because it's got a higher fat content, it tends to not be very dry. And so duck is great. And you get like Peking duck from Chinese places, a lot of in fact, a lot of Asian cuisine that I've had uh, cooks with duck. It's pretty good, but I haven't had it a lot of different ways, and I've never made it myself because duck is kind of expensive. And it's a little bit difficult to cook with. You can't really treat it just like chicken, but it's good. I like the taste of duck. Swally so says, Person, personally, meats is like a gun. Each is almost never the same, and you can never change depending on slight changes you do. Well, yeah, yeah, and opinions are going to be real subjective here based on people's experiences, their culture, where they come from. And there's, there's quite a bit of, of different reasons why you can have different thoughts on the different types of meats here. That's why I thought this was an interesting tier list. One, because there's a good selection of stuff here, and two, it's a lot of good discussion on, you know, I grew up eating this, or I my culture cooks with this a lot, and, you know, that's, that's a pretty interesting discussion. So, yeah, that's definitely true, Smalley. All right. So, Duck A tier. Probably going to get pushed down further, too. But but really good. Next up, Goat. I have only eaten Goat a couple times, and it was at Indian restaurants. I know in certain cultures that's a lot more common as a, a meat. But I've only ever had it in Indian food so far. And it was fine. It was kind of similar to lamb to me so i'm gonna put goat up on low b tier i'd have to try it straight up and not in like a simmered dish to get a better feel for what it tastes like on its own but the texture and taste in it was like some sort of goat curry that i tried at an indian place once and it was good uh, it was lean uh definitely wasn't like a really heavy heavy fat content meat uh, but it was good and if I wasn't told it was goat, I probably would have assumed it was lamb or beef. Smalley says, yeah, like me being Albanian Muslim, I never had pork. But, but you had some great experiences with beef because many people are Muslim too. So they use many other things that's not pork. Yeah, that's right. You know, certain cultures don't eat certain types of meat. And so what they can do and 
and make with all the other ones is a lot more varied and, and a lot more nuanced. You know, like Indian culture, you don't eat beef, right? Beef is considered sacred in most of the religions over there. So you're going to see a lot of things like lamb, chicken, and other stuff in place. But yeah, I kind of feel that way about goat. I, in fact, I've never looked actively and seen this in stores here in the States. I'm sure you could find it. But I don't know. I, I would like to try it on its own just to compare. But it was, it was definitely fine. Uh, next up, haddock. This is a type of fish. And this is one I've had, but I have no opinions on haddock. I can't remember the last time I had it on its own. So I'm going to put it on C tier. It's This one is even less of a personality than cod. Similar in texture. It's kind of got a neutral flavor. So haddock, you could kind of flavor it however you want. Because it's it's kind of neutral. So I consider this one pretty, pretty mid. It's fine. Inoffensive. It's too bad tilapia is not on here. Tilapia is per pretty interesting and versatile too. Uh, but we'll move on. Hot dogs. As a quote-unquote meat hot dogs. I'm going to put hot dogs on B tier. For the the questions of content and contents on hot dogs, they're fine. I, I never go out of my way to buy or eat these. But if I'm at a barbecue, you know, and people throw some, some dogs on the grill, whether they're the regular pork ones or like the Hebrew nationals, which are all beef, I believe... Either or. I'm not above eating a hot dog every once in a while. They're fine. I'm pretty much neutral on them. I like sausage more, and that's over here. Good distinction in the preparation and contents of a hot dog versus a sausage. Sausage is going to rank pretty high. In fact, I'm probably going to put that on high A tier. So give me, give me like a good sausage. You know, like a Polish sausage or a bratwurst or something like that on a grill i'll take that over a hot dog any day hands down but hot dogs are fine it was pretty pretty good compromise all right next up lamb lamb is going to go up on close to the top of a tier And thinking about all of the ways I've eaten lamb in my, my experiences, I've had it straight up, like lamb racks, uh, broiled or baked in the oven, like a garlic crust. Rack of lamb, really good. You have to be careful with lamb because if you cook it wrong, you will be very unhappy. It's a little bit more finicky of a meat, but it's got a really good balance of kind of fat content and flavor. It's a bit more gamey than a beef and a bit more soft to me. But lamb is, is excellent, and my favorite way to eat it is ground up and mixed with uh, beef in gyros. I think I mentioned before on stream a lot, at some point that I have a really good recipe for making gyro meat, like you get at the restaurants where they got the big skewer of meat on the spit and they slice it off. Yeah, I know how to make that in the oven, and it uses ground beef and ground lamb, and it's excellent. I love gyros. I've also had a lot of lamb in Indian curries and those types of dishes. Greek, Greek type dishes. Lamb is great. It's a, it's a really, really versatile meat. Just not one I eat super often, but I do like it in a lot of things. Small E says, also if you find yourself in, a, in an Albanian district of your area there, you're going to have pretty good stuff, but they mostly have beef or, or other in the menu. For example, they would take ground beef and basically make a little sausage, but small, small without the wrap, and they almost always hit it out of the park. Okay, and then they have patties where you're supposed to cut up and eat more of the pepper in it and sausage, and there's many different versions that they make. And then Smalley says, by the way, because Turkey, the famous expansion tower, have many different versions of a brek. Okay. 
I assume you mean like Turkish food, right? Unless you're talking about the, the meat turkey. Uh, but I've never heard of Breck. I may have tried it, I just don't know it by name. But yeah, good points. So looking at the, the ranking, yeah, lamb, good stuff. I haven't had lamb in a while, but... Very good. All right, next up we got lobster. This is the probably controversial hot take so far. I think lobster is good. I do not put it at the top. I think crab is much better. So lobster, I'm gonna put on. I'm gonna put on low A tier. It's gonna probably get bumped down the list as we fill it out. But to me, lobster does not have the versatility of crab. And I have had whole lobster. Um, in fact, long, long time ago, when I went to Boston. We, uh, we got some really good fresh lobster there. And it's good. They were whole lobsters. Most of the lobster I've consumed has been lobster tails. You know, grilled, basted. Lobster tails, pretty straightforward. And they're good. It's just you don't really get a lot in lobster. You got to do a lot more work in order to get, you know, your, your fill. Versus crab. You know, whole dungeness crab, you get a pretty decent amount of meat for the work. And then king crab is pretty much all meat. And I just think the flavor of lobster falls down a little bit, but it's good. It's got a bit more of a sweeter taste and it's rich. Lobster with butter is good. Lobster rolls, which in certain parts of the United States are really famous on like on the East Coast for lobster rolls. Those are excellent. But yeah, if I had a choice, I'd probably go crab over lobster. And I think crab is a little less expensive too. Next up, lox. I don't know why lox on here specifically. Maybe this is one of the most common ways people eat smoked or cured salmon. And so for people who haven't heard of lox, it's basically a thinly sliced cured salmon. And it's really popular on bagels with cream cheese. And lox to me is pretty okay. Um, I, I've eaten it before. I'm going to put it up here above hot dogs. My favorite way to eat salmon is straight up smoked. And, uh, I know someone who has a really good recipe, a legendary recipe for smoked salmon, and to me that, that murders lox in comparison, but it's not on the list. We just have salmon in general down here. So that'll probably go into that rating, but lox is all right. I've, I've had that before. It's, it's an interesting way to eat it. Iconic says, hello, yo, we rank in meat. Nice. Welcome to the stream, Iconic. Here's the tier list. I'm gonna put it in chat again. Feel free to grab it and make your own and send me your results. A uh, question that's come up so far is uh, where would you put stuff you haven't had? I would just customize the bottom tier list like I've done here. Bottom tier and make it haven't tried and stick everything there. And then rank everything else. So yeah, give it a try. I'd be interested to hear how yours compares to mine and everyone else's. Now, see, when I eventually finish the Discord, then there'll be a place that people can post all that stuff. But until then, feel free to send them directly to me, either here here on Discord or on Twitter. Probably can't stay on Twitter for too much longer because Twitter's kind of imploding right now. And that's okay. Alright, let's move on. Muscles. Cousin to Clams. In fact, they're very similar to Clams, so I'm going to put them low C tier. Muscles are, are very okay. I've had them in stuff, they're fine. But I, I would never go out of my way to, to buy or make them myself since I'm not a big fan of clams out the shell. So I'm pretty, pretty meh on muscles. They don't stand out to me. Sorry, that says funny Mario flipping off the world. Yeah, did that, did that quote unquote parody Nintendo of America account get banned yet? For people who don't know what Sour Lad's talking about, someone paid for a verified account called like Nintendo of America or something, and they just posted a picture of Mario giving the bird. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Twitter's an absolute dumpster fire right now, and I think it's hilarious, but as someone who uses Twitter just to keep track of my friends and post updates on stuff I'm doing, it would be a little annoying if it completely died, but given how Twitter is a cesspool of opinions outside of just the the business aspects, that would be a little bit annoying, but hey, 
You know, if, if uh, big old Lord Elon wants to completely torpedo the platform in the ground, then it could be worse. All right, moving on on the meat tier list. Back to seafood. Continuing on from mussels. Octopus. Octopus. This one is kind of interesting to talk about since I think depending on where you're from and your culture, octopus is either going to be something you're familiar with or something really foreign or something you've never tried or somewhere in between. But I'm going to put octopus up here on A tier and I'm going to explain a little bit because there's a really specific reason for me why I put octopus this high up and it's not because I'm a big fan of sushi. I actually am not a big fan of taco, which is usually you get it at sushi joints and it's boiled, right? Boiled octopus is fine. Not my first choice. And you really have to be careful where you eat it because some places get it over boiled and it's really rubbery and tough. Now, that's no good. Uh, Small E says, there's a saying I like to use out of everyone that should not be given a platform. This is the reason why. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, a case in point, Small E. But that's been a, that's been the case on Twitter for years. It's it's a platform that did its best to police people that shouldn't be out there with a free voice because they're dangerous, and completely removing that restriction just gives those people another outlet, and it's not not necessarily a good thing. So that's it. I think eight eight bucks a month just to help Elon get back forty billion he lost when he bought Twitter. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know he's trying to figure out a way to salvage the deal he made and. And between that and wanting to do what he wants, it's just going to kill the platform. It's just going to to kill the platform, and he's going to probably probably take it private, and then turn it into like the Elon Musk echo chamber zone or something. As Harlan said, Twitter's making people too comfortable without getting punched in the face. So saith Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah, to paraphrase that quote that Mike Tyson said, it was something like, you know, everybody has a, a plan until they get punched in the face or something like that. Yeah. That's not new, though. People have been having terrible thoughts and opinions on Twitter forever. It's why I generally don't search through trending stuff and read. I keep track of the people I care about and people I want to follow, and that's about it. Because you start scrolling through Twitter, it's just a bummer, man. It's just a bummer. But anyway... Back to octopus. So why is it so high on the list? My favorite way to eat octopus is smoked. And that is not a super common way to eat it, at least not where I live. I've seen it grilled. Grilled is fine. Any sort of cooked octopus that's not straight up boiling it is a good way to reduce that rubbery texture and keep it soft and flavorful. And when you do that, octopus is very, very tasty. And so the recipe that I've used before, in fact, I've been trying to do this. I was trying to do this before the end of the the season, before it got super cold. But it's essentially winter now where I live. You take the octopus, and it's completely raw. You know, it's hard to find too, and can be expensive. But you basically rub it with salt, and you rinse the slime that's on you know regular octopus on their skin. You use salt and water to kind of scrub all that slime off. And then you do like a brine marinade overnight. And this, the one that I've done that I've tried was kind of a mix of like soy sauce, garlic, and a bunch of other flavors. It's it a Hawaiian recipe that I found on a website from this guy over in Hawaii. And so you marinate the octopus in the sauce overnight or a couple days. And then you put it in a smoker and you smoke it for several hours at a low heat. The one that I've used is the type of standing rack smoker where the box is a chamber connected to the racks. So the heat is far away from everything you're smoking. It's really good for smoking things like salmon, cheese, and octopus. And so that's what we did. We, we laid out a bunch of really big legs on the smoker after we pulled them out of the marinade and smoked it for several hours. And the octopus dries up because it's being smoked. And it shrinks down a considerable amount from like five pounds of uh, octopus it shrinks down almost 50 percent but what you get at the end of that is a, a drier smoke texture and it's very soft when you slice it so it doesn't get rubbery it's not chewy it's just soft and the smoke goes straight through along with the marinade and it is 
god tier product it's so good it's a little bit of work and takes a while to make but hands down best way to eat octopus smoked and uh that's why it's so high on the list here that's the only way i'd like to eat it, except for maybe grilled but if i'm gonna make it and i can get my hands on a fresh octopus smoked all the way if uh i know we're, we're trying to do do this at some point maybe when it, we get out of winter and if i if we when we make that batch i'll take some pictures and put them um somewhere so people can see what i'm talking about it's kind of hard to describe but yeah smoked octopus is godlike very very good next up we got oysters oysters this might be a little bit of a surprise because of how low i put clams and mussels but i'm gonna put oysters up here on a tier right below octopus Smalley says, but I think some people I talk to actually think I'm insane at least. Hope so. Well, you could have a lot of thoughts, but there's a difference between having eccentric thoughts and being toxic, right? That would be the difference. All right, so why are oysters up here so high? The most common way I've eaten oysters is not raw. In fact, I'm really not too keen on doing that. That seems like not really a, a fun time, like doing raw oyster shooters. And uh, I like my oysters grilled. And I've had them just thrown on a grill and cooked at a high heat until they open up. And then you let them kind of cook in their own juices so they get a little bit drier. And then you make a chili pepper and soy sauce sauce and just drizzle a little bit, bit of that on the oysters and you eat them that way. That's something that, again, I know a lot of Hawaii people, and that's a real real common thing they do in Hawaii, like a hibachi or a grill. They grill oysters on there, and they put a little bit of chili pepper and soy sauce over them. It's great. Fantastic. But that is not the best type of oyster that I've ever had. The best type of oyster I've ever had was when my brother and I went to New Orleans a long time ago, like maybe seven years ago now for the first time just to visit and check it out we asked the locals in our ubers and whatnot when we were, were kicking around in new orleans this is well before the pandemic we said what's a really iconic and popular local food that we need to try while we're here in new orleans and it was one of our uber drivers they said you've got to try charbroiled oysters and i'd never heard of that and i've, I've heard of raw oysters and you know, oysters on the half shell or, or grilled like I'm used to eating. And I said, oh, what's that? And they said, it's a local, like, kind of like Cajun or New Orleans specialty. Find a place like this one I recommend and then just go, go try it. Try charbroiled oysters. You won't regret it. Iconic says, iconic, you say? Yes. We are talking about iconic. And so we went to this one place. I don't remember the name at this point because it's been so long, but when they do charbroiled oysters, they basically shuck the oyster open and keep it on, on the half shell and they throw it on an open fire grill and then fill up the shell with a mix of like butter, herbs, seasonings, and I think like a Romano type of cheese. And they just charbroil the oysters in, in all those sauces and flavorings. And then once it's cooked, they bring it out on a plate on like a plate of butter and they serve it with like a crusty baguette roll and you just dip it in the sauce and eat and it is one of the greatest things i've ever eaten in my entire life i thought it was going to be good but given how people were hyping it up i said there's no way it can be that good believe me folks it was that good charbroiled oysters it was insane that's the best thing i ate while i was there and uh i would like to figure out how to make that and i think it largely comes down to the sauces and everything you're throwing in there when you're throwing them on the grill, but good Lord, if you're ever in the new Orleans area folks and for people who live there, I know there's some folks that have been here in chat that are from that area, but if you're ever in new Orleans, charbroiled oysters and, uh, tell them your old grandpa Raku sent you. It is very, very good. Unless you don't eat seafood then it's moot, but seriously, charbroiled oysters. I would go back just for that if it wasn't so far away. I do not live close to New Orleans.
All right. Next up, we have pheasant. This is back to poultry. Pheasant. I'm kind of lumping pheasant and kind of Cornish game hen in a similar category because they're, they're they're close. They're not the same, I know, but I'm gonna say B tier. This is really adjacent to chicken. A smaller bird. The flavor is a little different. Fat content, fat proportion is a little bit different. But pheasant, at least that I tried a long time ago, it's fine. You know, I, I, it tastes like chicken, as the old saying goes. And it's pretty inoffensive. All right. All right, I'm just responding to something on Discord. All right, moving on from pheasant, pork, the other white meat. And that's the slogan, right? Uh, pork, I'm going to put up here on A tier above octopus and that is coming from the fact that I think pork is more versatile. You can do a lot more with it. Again, separating that out from bacon, which gets its own class because bacon. But pork, pretty solid. I'm trying to think of all the ways that I, I've cooked pork. Uh, probably, again, I know I talk a lot about Hawaiian recipes because I, again, I know a lot of Hawaii people. Kalua pork. And I did share this recipe at Wazi and Matt, and they've made it before. But Kalua pork is a real common dish in Hawaii. Traditionally, it's made by taking a whole pig, and I'm sure folks who have seen like pictures of luau's and whatever know what I'm talking about. Kalua pork is when they take a whole pig and they season it and they throw it in a ground oven called an emu. And basically you throw it in the ground with a bunch of hot coals and tea leaves and you wrap it and you basically slow cook, slow cook, slow steam, cook the entire pig for like a day in a ground oven. And what you get is a really flavorful, soft, and delicious roast pig. And so the recipe I use is, is not that complicated. I don't even have a yard, much less a place to put a yard oven. And so Kalua pork, and this will be a real quick uh, one of Raku's recipes. I'll give you a rundown here for folks who want to try it. And I can always send it via something like Discord if you want to try it yourself and want the, the written recipe. But I just take a shoulder of pork. You know, when you get in the butcher from your regular grocery stores, like run up to Safeway, or live near Safeway, and get a pork shoulder, bone in. Uh, that's kind of important. It makes a difference. But get a bone in pork shoulder, and then take that pork shoulder and throw it in a crock pot. If you have a way to get coarse salt like a, a coarse ground sea salt works. Some places, at least on this coast, sell Hawaiian rock salt. And if you can find that, it's good, but it's not necessary. But you basically put a bit of salt around the outside. You rub it in on the outside of the pork shoulder. Don't go super hardcore with it because you're slow cooking. So if you put a ton of salt, it's going to be super salty. So you just rub the outside of the pork shoulder with a bit of salt Put it in the slow cooker, like a crock pot or, you know, whatever your slow cooker of choice is. Add maybe a cup of water and then a teaspoon of liquid smoke. And liquid smoke is pretty common to find in, in stores as a seasoning. People use it in barbecues and all sorts of things as a flavoring. And liquid smoke's potent, so just put like a teaspoon and not a whole lot. And then you basically take that and slow cook it for eight hours, between six to eight hours. And then as it cooks, the pork will get soft and stew in its own juices. And by the time you're done, it should be basically pulled pork. You could shred it and kind of separate it with a fork. That's when you know it's done. And then mix it up, and then that's Kahlua pork. Very similar in taste and texture to what you throw in the ground in the traditional way in Hawaii, but much easier. You can basically toss it in a crock pot in the morning before you go to school or work. And it'll be done by the time you get back. I would just make sure you leave it on low heat so you don't burn your house down. But yeah, very simple, but really effective. And I've also done pulled pork. 
uh, pork chashu, either the Chinese way or the Japanese way, depending on what you're using it for. Also pretty godlike. So yeah, pork rates highly. You know what? I'm going to put it above lamb. I can, I can do more things with pork than I can with lamb. And I understand certain cultures don't eat pork, just like we were talking about certain cultures don't eat beef. But it's great, great meat. Very, very versatile and tasty. Pork belly, too. When I think about it, going to, like, Korean barbecue restaurants or Asian places that do pork belly. Pork belly's pretty good. All right. Next up, we've got salmon. Salmon. I think that's my favorite fish on the list here of, of all the fish types. And I'm lumping all of the cooked versions of salmon in addition to raw because salmon sashimi at like a sushi joint is my favorite type of sashimi. Like an Ora King or Sakai or any, any kind of salmon sashimi is godlike. It's my favorite. So salmon is going to go up here above octopus under lamb. And on the West Coast, salmon's pretty popular. You see it in a lot of restaurants and in the stores. But it's also pretty easy to cook with if you're not, you know, eating it raw at a sushi joint. Baked or like a, a grilled. People do plank salmon where they throw it on a grill on a wood plank so you get that kind of wood smoky flavor on a grill. That's really good. You could throw a bunch of seasonings like we talked about before earlier on, wrap it in foil, throw it in the oven and bake it. And you get like a, a simmered steamed salmon. It's a really good fish. And it's rich. It's got a pretty good fat content, so it's not going to be dry and kind of a flaky. Yeah, I like salmon. I don't eat this enough. I probably should. It, it's good for you. All right. Next up, we have sausage. This is the second of the meat products we have. First one was hot dogs, which is in a class of its own. But sausage to me is like elevated hot dogs. You know, given a choice, uh, a type of sausage or a hot dog, sausage all the way. So that's going up here on high A tier. I'm gonna put sausage above salmon. Don't ever really have a preference between beef and or pork, but in general, uh, sausage is great. Grilled usually, uh, you can also take it and chop it up and put it in things. You know, you wanna do like an andouille sausage in Italian food or Cajun food. Pretty, pretty versatile. And I think, I think that kind of goes a little bit further in mileage than hot dogs. So yeah, sausage all the way. Bratwurst. All right. What do we got next? Scallops. Back to seafood. Scallops are fantastic. I am putting scallops. Mm, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. I'm going to go scallops above sausage by sheer level of decadence and sort of classiness. I do not eat scallops often. They are expensive, especially if you get the big ones, the little base scallops. Not as expensive, but you can't do as much fun stuff with them. But those big, you know, one inch diameter... I don't know, sea scallops? As opposed to base scallops? I, I don't remember exactly what the terminology is, but you know the ones I'm talking about, the ones that are big, like in the picture here. Those grilled, pan-seared, or even raw at a sushi joint, like hotate guy. I love scallops, and I do not eat them often, but when I do, they are always a treat. And I have made, it's been a while, because, you know, especially with inflation, what it is now, I've made bacon wrapped scallops before, and that is pretty up there as far as like a uh, a way to eat them. You know, combining something like bacon and wrapping it around one of these big scallops and just pan searing it to get a good crisp on the bacon, 
and then all of that fat gets cooked in the scallop itself. Chef's kiss. Fantastic. But I haven't had that in forever. It's been, probably been eight years since I've had that. But even outside of something that fancy, just grilled or sauteed in a pan with some garlic and herbs, the scallops are great. They're just pricey. All right. Next up, shrimp. Shrimp is, hmm, I gotta think about this one. Because I do like shrimp. In fact, I, I eat shrimp a lot. Because it's cheap. It's cheaper. Uh, I'm gonna put shrimp above scallops by virtue of the fact that one, they're easier to get, and two, I can cook a lot more different things with shrimp compared to scallops. And this is including boiled shrimp like this is a shrimp cocktail in the picture here shrimp cocktail is good uh, fried shrimp or shrimp tempura if you go in Japanese is good you could throw shrimp in Italian food like pasta sauces like a shrimp scampi or you can do like a shrimp alfredo if you wanted to uh, Cajun food shrimp gumbo or shrimp jambalaya very versatile you can put shrimp in on pretty much any type of food and it'll be good in addition to that, we talk about sushi a lot because sushi is my favorite type of food or one of my favorite types of food. Raw shrimp, ama ebi, where they take the the completely uncooked fresh shrimp and they just cut it open. That's also fantastic. It's one of my favorites. So yeah, I'm going to put shrimp high up here because it's very versatile. It can be prepared a lot of different ways and a lot of different styles and a lot of different types of cooking. So yeah, big fan of shrimp. Next up, Spam, with its inf infamous or famous or notorious legacy, however you want to think about it. And depending on where you're from in the world, you may have a, a certain perception of Spam. That being said, this might be another hot take, but I'm going to put Spam up here on at the bottom of A tier, next to Lobster. And that might surprise some people because spam is largely considered, you know, a trash product and a trash meat. But hear me out. There's only one reason why spam sits this high on a meat tier list. And it's, it has to do with my history with it. And I'm going to come clean with you folks out the gate and tell you, like, spam out the can is gross. Don't eat spam out the can. That's probably why so many people don't like it uncooked out of the can and that gelatin stuff they pack it with is very off-putting don't do that you're, you're only doing yourself a disservice my favorite way to eat spam is via a type of food from hawaii again goes back to the hawaiians and their their awesome culture and cooking spam musubi all right now depending on where you are in the world if you've ever been to a hawaiian place or some place that serves hawaiian food you may have seen Spam Musubi on the shelf. And it's essentially like a Spam sushi. You have rice with a, a, a slice of Spam wrapped in seaweed. And while that might not sound good, if you have a good recipe for Spam Musubi, it is a godlike food. And it's usually like an appetizer, right? So I have a recipe. I won't get into the specifics of where it comes from, but I have a recipe that I didn't make it. You know, I've obtained it and used it for years. But basically, you create the rice like you would at a sushi joint. And this is a big difference from most places, including a lot of Hawaiian places that use just plain steamed you know, white rice that you have in Asian food. Like an like a Asian... You can use sticky rice, but sushi rice is the best if you, if you can get it. So it's steamed sushi rice. And then you mix some rice vinegar and sugar in with the rice and it flavors it with that slightly sweet taste you get at a sushi restaurant right so you do that and you you get what's called a musubi press and it looks like a a plastic frame with a plunger on top in a rectangular shape and you basically put a brick layer of rice down and then you put a layer of spam in between 
and the spam is sauteed in like a sweet teriyaki sauce. So you saute it and flavor the spam with like a sweet teriyaki sauce. And then you put that in between the rice or on top of the first layer and you put another layer on top of that and you press it into a rectangular brick using this mold. And then you wrap the seaweed around the outside like a, like a, a border all the way around the outside and then you eat it. And it's fantastic. But it's a little bit different because most places in Hawaii and in restaurants I've seen, they do like a block of rice and they put the spam on top and then they wrap like a little strip around of seaweed around it. That's okay, but having it wrapped fully around the outside, I think is a lot better. You get a good mix and distribution per bite of spam to rice. And then it's bounded by the sweet or the sweet, salty and savory taste of the roasted seaweed. So this is a personal bias and I'm sure not everyone is gonna agree. But Spam Musubi, Vault Spam, up to A tier. Outside of that, believe it or not, you could slice up Spam and fry it like bacon and have it for breakfast. And it's a perfectly serviceable breakfast food. Just don't eat it raw. That's why I think a lot of people think it's so gross. They probably ate it raw. Don't do that. Do yourself a favor and cook your Spam. So, I guess second hot take of the day. After the, the lobster versus crab discussion, I suppose. Uh, Iconic says, oh yes. Well, I'm assuming you, you probably know what I'm talking about then, or at least have seen it. But uh, yeah, if anyone anyone wants that recipe, hit me up. I, I shared it with Wazi and Matt, and they've made it up there in uh, Canada land. And that Spam Musubi recipe was a big hit with all their, their crew up there. Which is good. Spreading, spreading the gospel. All right. Moving on, next on the list, we've got squid. Uh, cousin to octopus, but very different in taste and texture. Squid, I, I like a lot of dishes that make that are made with squid. And uh, we we're talking earlier about calamari. So I'm gonna put squid up on B tier below cod. And I see Iconics are doing the hydrate and the stretch. I'll take a drink of my, well, technically it's not good fuel. This is gamer sups. It's a mango flavor I got with that. When I ordered that, uh, gamer fart one. That's good. Tastes like mango. But let's see squid. So probably my favorite way to eat squid would be calamari cut into rings or tubes and then deep fried with like a good crisp batter and like an aioli dipping sauce is is pretty pretty top tier calamari is good you gotta be a little bit careful how you make it though it's it can be easy to screw up you can overcook your your squid and it comes out like the texture of a tire you don't want to do that so as long as you're careful with how you make it uh it's pretty good i uh, have had squid or ika in a sushi restaurant raw on top of rice for nigiri and I am not a super big fan of that. I hear it's a lot better in Japan compared to like in the States. But it tends to be a little bit chewy and slimy. It's the slimy texture I'm not a big fan of. Supposedly if you have good ika that's fresh and prepared right in Japan, you don't get that. It's just, just soft and has a, a good neutral flavor. So I'd have to try it there. But raw, not super a big fan of. I'd rather have it cooked in some capacity. But yeah, it's fine. I, I rate octopus a lot higher because of the smoked. I never tried smoking squid. Hmm. I think about that. It's... Because you usually smoke the legs of the octopus, and you don't do that for squid because like the meat comes from the body, the long tube, I think you're going to have a tougher time keeping it from drying out if you try and smoke it. But I don't know. That's one thing I've never tried. Could be good. All right, let's move on. Next up, swordfish. Swordfish is another type of seafood I don't eat super often, but it is quite good. So we'll put it up here on B tier below goat. And swordfish is expensive. You know, you see that at restaurants like sword, grilled swordfish steaks. Uh, not cheap, but pretty tasty if done right. It's a pretty good moisture content and texture it's soft 
white flash fish. It's good. It's just not one I have access to. Like, I, I don't even look for swordfish in the stores because I don't buy a lot of seafood. But if I had the choice at like a restaurant, grilled swordfish is, is very tasty. So it's a good good one. Just not one I eat very often. All right. Round in the corner on this list. Tuna. Tuna. Hmm. This would be pretty low on the list if it wasn't for sushi. So I'm going to put tuna up here on a tier above oyster. And this is, again, primarily driven by sushi. This is, I don't really eat tuna in, in much of any sort of form cooked. The canned tuna I was eating for a while. Um, that's okay. I'm not a big fan of tuna sandwiches. But raw tuna, like a bluefin. Bluefin tuna is fantastic. Usually what you get at a sushi joint is different cuts and grades of like a bluefin tuna. It's, it's really a common one. You get things like the maguro, which is the dark red akami, the red meat. You have chutoro, otoro, regular toro, the different cuts of the fatty belly of the tuna. And that stuff is top tier. Uh, I have used to go to this local seafood market that would get their stuff fresh caught from fishermen in the area and they would sell blocks of like the different cuts of the tuna bellies like really high grade sushi grade tuna for much cheaper than if you're buying it like buy the the piece at a restaurant obviously and uh that's really good so yeah the, the different cuts of like sushi grade tuna is what puts it so high on the list here i don't really eat it in any other context but it's delicious you, you folks have, have heard me spout out about how much I like sushi, and that's the main reason this one's on here. It's the main reason salmon is so high up there, scallops, shrimp. A lot of these seafood things are tied directly to sushi. So I'm sure that surprises nobody. Next up, we got turkey. Turkey, Thanksgiving favorite here in the States. Mm, I don't have that high of an attachment to turkey but i do like it for one specific reason so i'm going to put it up here at the top of b tier and i'm pretty meh on roast turkey for thanksgiving it tends to be really dry and it can put you to sleep turkey drumsticks and dark meat are good as long as they're not overcooked and dried out but speaking of how i've made turkey here it's a long been a long time it's probably been close to a decade because the logistics make it very difficult but deep fried turkey, which is a thing in certain parts of the South in this, the United States, as I understand. I don't live in the South, but fried turkey is something that we wanted to try many years ago. And so we got a bunch of people together and got a big stock pot that they use for turkey frying and then a butt ton of the peanut oil, which we use to fry. And you basically take a whole turkey and make sure it is not a frozen turkey unless you want something to explode into a giant napalm fire of death. Don't do that. Um, and the poundage of turkey you use is directly proportional to how much oil you measure too. So you have to have it very specifically measured so you don't overfill your pot and then also have a giant napalm fireball of death. But you take the whole turkey. Iconic says, always been interested in that. Yeah, it's fascinating, man. So you take a whole turkey and you'll usually do a dry rub on the outside of the turkey and under the skin so like a mix of like a spice or cajun or barbecue rub you rub the in the skin outside of the bird and under the flesh or under the skin on the flesh and you get a good rub and then what people do and this is was really fascinating from when we did turkey fry the first time we've done it a couple times it's just been a long time since then you take these big syringes and they look like the big you know, hypodermic needle syringes and you fill them with marinades right so you put different types of marinades we tried all sorts of barbecue like a creole butter a whole bunch of different types of marinades and you inject it into different sections of the turkey as you're prepping it and you can do things like do quadrants you know put one like honey barbecue sauce into one quadrant of the turkey and you inject it in different spots and you're basically filling the bird up with marinades and then you do a different flavor in a different quadrant. You want to do like a Cajun butter one on the upper quadrant. Then you just inject it there and you have all these different things. 
And then once all that is done, you take the turkey, you stick it on the strainer pot, and you lower it into the vat or the, the pot of oil, and you fry it for a certain amount of time based on the poundage. And then once it's done, you pull it out, and then you just slice it up and eat it. And all of the dryness of turkey is completely gone when you fry it like that because you know you're soaking it in oil and it maintains all the moisture because of the, the marinades you're injecting into it so you're getting a very soft moist flavorful cuts of the turkey once you pull it out and it is the greatest thing ever sour lad said the south always finds a way to deep fry anything yeah yeah this is, this is some some straight out in the south but it's it's fantastic and you have so much control over flavors just by experimenting with different marinades and whatnot. It's the best way to eat turkey, hands down. Like I, I'm, again, pretty lukewarm on turkey in general. But when you deep fry it and you, you mix in all the different flavorings, it is phenomenal. Like it, I, It's hard to explain, but if you do it right, it is, it is great. Logistically, it's just tougher to do because you don't want to just do one. If you're going to go through the setup of getting all the oil, you need gallons and gallons of peanut oil. And you have to set up... You know, like an external burner and a pot and everything. Because you, you don't want to do this in a garage because that's how people burn their house down. You need a yard. And you need like a big open setup that, you know, you can have under control just in case something goes wrong. But you can do that. It's unreal. It's like nothing I've ever had before. Fried turkey is the best way to eat it. You know, hands down. But it, it's been a long time some point maybe in the future because i know when we did it many years ago we did like half a dozen of them a bunch of friends over and whatnot everyone got to season and flavor their own turkey and then we fried them one by one and then everyone got to take home like a big fried turkey and you know it's like a month's worth of food so yeah i don't know i'd like to do that again but it's just a lot of work all right last one on the list Last meat, venison. Venison or deer meat. Mm, I'm going to put this one in the middle of B tier. I've only had venison in one way because one of my coworkers used to go hunting a lot. And they would go deer hunting out in the hinterlands. And they would take their deer catch back when they would catch them to a friend who lived somewhere in the area. And that friend would make deer... Uh, Meat pepperoni sticks, you know, like uh, you get the beef pepperoni sticks in the stores. This friend would make that out of the deer meat. So like a smoked um, blended meat stick with deer. And it was really good. My friend used to give them to me. Like he'd give me a set of them. Uh, and that was great. On its own, I hear deer. Deer is a bit leaner and gamey, kind of similar to a, a lamb. Uh, but probably tougher and leaner than a lamb because of the nature of deer so i've never had venison straight up but i've heard it's, it's decent you're probably going to get much lower fat content so you have to be careful not to dry it out when you cook it but i've heard good things I, i've never never seen it in stores around here i think you'd have to go to a specialty butcher in order to get it but i don't know i would, I would try it and so that is the complete meat tier list at least in my opinion s tier is not that that well that fleshed out i kind of would have assumed there'd be more up here but chicken sits at the top of the tier list interestingly enough followed by beef crab and then bacon a tier got a lot more competition again part of what drives where i rank stuff is how i cook with them And so, again, I encourage people to put together their own lists and tell me why my opinions are terrible. Feel free to send them to me. So these other ones. I've heard frog tastes like chicken. I'll have to ask uh, Froggy about that since he lost, or well, not lost a bet, but part of the Extra Life Challenge is that he has to eat frog soup. Him and Banani have just been having trouble getting frog over in jersey and so we'll, we'll we'll get the opinion on that when it comes back but i oh, know alligator either i've tried alligator before it does taste like chicken uh no eel talking about seafood unagi that's a shame unagi's delicious 
River Eel. So this isn't a complete list, but it's got a good spread of regular and seafood for meat. So let's see. We will move on. I have another food list here that's gonna, that should be pretty fun. And hopefully it doesn't take too long to get through, but we'll see. Well, let me cue that one up. This next one is kind of something specific to the states, I guess. But I think some people can can probably relate to some of these brands. This is going to have some bleed over from fast food, okay? So this is mall food tier list. And I haven't been in a mall proper in probably two years. Since I never leave the house because of the pandemic. That and I just have no reason to go to a mall. It's, it's been a while. Maybe a year and a half. But these are really common brands or chains that you typically see in shopping malls. And some of these are standalone, you know, Burger King, obviously, McDonald's. Some of these are regular fast food chains. And some of them are more commonly found only in shopping malls. So it's different. There's some stuff on here we haven't ranked. So I figured this would be a fun one to do and, and then compare. And uh, let's separate some stuff out first. Uh, Nathan's Hot Dogs, I'm familiar with, but never been there. Harley Philly Steaks, haven't been there. Kelly's Cajun Grill, I haven't been there. Villa, it's like pizza, Wetzel's. These are probably regional. I think a good majority of these are on the West Coast. Again, I live on the West Coast. I think that's it. Sorry, that said shopping malls and buddies with subways in Walmart. Yeah, so there, you're also going to get some overlap with things that are sort of set up as joint joint operations with other retailers. We'll we'll we're lumping this under the general column of mall food like food court think food court but obviously you have a lot of other ways you can you can get to these properties because again most of these are standalone but a lot of them are mall based so that's that's why i thought this one was fun so let's let's go s to f same same ranking um and see where things fall uh let me put the link for this one I'll, I'll do the same share link for put this in the chat and so people can create their own list of tiers for mall food chains properties etc so here you go And credits for this one goes to Jess Master on Twitter. First up, Auntie Anne's Pretzels. This is a really specific and somewhat niche type of, of chain. But their pretzels are pretty good. So I'm going to put them up on B tier. Can't remember the last time I had one. But, you know, you get the warm pretzels with the cheese dipping sauce and whatnot. It, it's... Kind of a guilty pleasure type thing, but that's good. Auntie Anne's pretzels. You are pretty all right. Burger King. Sort of the the odd one out in a lot of regular fast food tier lists. I think Burger King is pretty mid. And if it wasn't for the fact that their flame boiled whoppers are pretty good. I like that. And I do like their fish sandwich, especially compared to McDonald's filet fish, which I think is disgusting. Burger King, I'm not putting super low, but you're going in C tier. It would be one of my last choices in the food court to go to. Just because there's so many other places that I'd rather eat than a Burger King. But if everything else was closed and the only thing open was a Burger King, you know, I'd take it. Oh, sorry. Next up, 
Sbarro. Sbarro, that's... Is it just pizza or is it Italian food too? Yeah, pizza. Sbarro's going in D tier. I have, well, would never eat there unless there was literally nothing else. Even if it was the only thing open in a mall, I would probably leave the mall and go somewhere else because it's it's pretty low tier pizza from what I remember. And they're they're kind of a punchline, but yeah, I think I don't, how are they still here? Who eats there? I don't know. It's it's pretty pretty garbage. Orange Julius, which also I'm surprised they still exist too. Orange Julius, their food is pretty low tier. If I was rating them on food alone, they'd probably be down here in D tier. They have hot dogs and other things, but it's it's really not great. But their smoothies and their drinks, which they're famous for, the Orange Julius product is like a vanilla orange shake, essentially, shake smoothie. And that's really good. That I would go to an Orange Julius and get their drink and then go eat somewhere else. But you only see these in malls. And I don't know if they're a mob front or what, but they, they still exist in some capacity, and that surprises me. But yeah, Orange Julius on the drink side, pretty good. Everything else is pretty forgettable. And by that token, Dairy Queen's kind of in the same boat. You know, you go to Dairy Queen for the desserts and the, like, the blizzards and everything else. I think their food is pretty pretty low tier as well. Maybe a little bit higher than Orange Julius. But they have the burgers and sandwiches and whatnot. But I've never been impressed with their food. So, if I was in a mall and I really felt like being indulgent, I would go eat somewhere else and stop at the DQ for dessert. Because that's kind of what you do, right? And some of these I've seen, like a joint. Orange Julius slash Dairy Queen and they have both menus. But yeah, I, I don't think anyone's really going there for their food. It's mostly the desserts. Next up, Popeyes. Famous fried chicken. Putting up on A tier. I like Popeyes. Especially compared to something like KFC. Well, yeah, well, we'll get to you. We'll get to you in a little bit. But Popeyes is great. There are not a lot of them in the area. In fact, the nearest one to me is, is decently far away. But if I'm looking for a main chain for fried chicken, yeah, they do good stuff there. Their chicken sandwiches are good. Their standalone fried chicken, the different types are great. Yeah, Popeyes is solid. Going back to, wow, is this technically desserts or breakfast? Krispy Kreme donuts? I can't remember the last time I've seen one of these in a mall. I've seen them, plenty of freestanding ones all over the place. But Krispy Kreme, they only do donuts. So I'm going to put them in B tier along with these other ones. These are kind of like the, I'm only going to go there for one specific thing row so far. And don't get me wrong, uh, Krispy Kreme donuts are delicious. I haven't had one in, in years. That... Purely driven by the fact that I don't go into an office for work anymore. And my, my donut intake dwindled down to nothing once that stopped. But fresh, the fresh off the line default Krispy Kreme donuts are pretty good. I gotta say, I, some people think they're overrated. Maybe. But those regular donuts are good. And their other specialty ones, pretty solid. It's just very specific, right? You're only going to go there for donuts. Next up, Qdoba. Do people have Qdoba in their part of the world? I don't think this is a West Coast specific chain, but I've seen them around. I just don't know how widespread across the country in the States these are. Hey, Edward's here. Edward says, I haven't heard anything yet, but I disagree. Well, Edward, you're banned. No, I'm just kidding. This tier list that we're doing here, Edward, is mall food mall food slash food court properties uh these are i think they're all american brands let me let me paste this in the chat if you want to make your own assuming you've been to these places i 
Uh, but what I was saying here for Qdoba, I like Qdoba. In fact, Qdoba, I think, absolutely demolishes Chipotle. And I say that because I think their food is better. And I don't see Qdoba getting in trouble for, for poisoning their, their customers. So I'm going to put Qdoba up here on 8 tier. Of all the Mexican joints here, you know, Mexican in quotes. I know it's not traditional Mexican food. But of all of the Americanized Mexican food places that I see here, I think Chipotle... Qdoba is probably going to be the one I rate the highest. We'll see. We'll see. But their burritos are good. They do, you know, your standard burrito fare, and they're the size of a freaking football. You definitely get your money's worth. My favorite Mexican chain is a local one. I can't talk about it without doxing where I live, so... It would it would be S tier, that place. But it, it's not on the list, so we'll move on. Taco Bell. I have not eaten at Taco Bell in years. Mostly because there aren't any nearby. I don't live near any Taco Bells. And two, my favorite chain that I mentioned just a second ago absolutely obliterates Taco Bell in all capacities. So I would never go there over my favorite place. So I'm going to put Taco Bell on C tier above Burger King. There are things on Taco Bell's menu I like, but... I'm not going to go out of my way to go to one. And no matter what I get, even if I like what I get, I pay for it. I pay for it every time. And I have to weigh out whether or not I've got time in my schedule to be screaming on the toilet. But if I can, then I'll go there if I've, you know, if I'm willing to pay the price. But without fail, no matter what I get from Taco Bell... It destroys my digestive system. And I hear that's part of the experience, right? So yeah, you're 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 quite a ways down from Qdoba. But the fact that I like things on the menu is keeping them out of D or F tier. I don't know if I you know what? Sparrow's garbage. I'm putting you down in F tier. Hagen Dazs. Hagen Dazs again. We're putting you in actually I'm putting you in C tier. Not because it's bad, but because it's very specific. I, I can't think of anything I'd go to Hagen dazs for that I couldn't buy at a store. The ice cream. Hagen dazs is a type of ice cream. Pretty pretty niche, pretty specific. Not not really that compelling to me. Next up, Baja Fresh. This is another Mexican place. I haven't eaten at one of these in forever. I I don't remember a single thing about the food there. I'm just going to put it above Taco Bell. Someone else who's been to a Baja Fresh more recently can tell me if their food tends to absolutely murder your digestion like Taco Bell. But under the assumption it doesn't, I'm going to put them a little higher. But I, I honestly can't remember anything about them. I just know I've been there before, and it was fine. It was pretty, pretty mid and didn't stand out. Next up, Hot Dog on a Stick. Hot dog on a stick has been a mainstay of mall food courts in the United States for decades. Many decades, since it says since 1946. You know what? Even though this is a bit more niche, I'm putting them up on B tier because sometimes you just want a good corn dog. You know, they they primarily only do corn dogs, but their corn dogs are really good. And I remember they would do like cherry lemonade or something else, and their employees wear the silly hats. So. It's going kind of on the, the niche niche tier for hot dog on a stick. It is it is fine, but let's let's not kid ourselves. You're only going there for like one or two reasons. Next up, Chick Fil A, another mainstay of regular fast food chains. In addition to mall places, I'm gonna put Chick Fil A up here on a tier. I think Chick Fil A, and this is probably a hot take. It's gonna get me in trouble. But I think Chick-fil-A is kind of overrated. They're not as common in the state I live in. We've got a few of them. And I've been there. In fact, the nearest one to me is not near. It's two cities away. It's far enough away that it wouldn't be worth it to go there for food because it'd be cold by the time I got home. And so... I think their chicken sandwiches and whatnot, they're good. They're, they're very solid if you can you know, get them fresh. But people, when they started opening Chick-fil-A's in my area, were, were you know, 
preaching the gospel of it's the greatest thing ever. You know, we're finally, finally up there on the tier of legitimacy because we have Chick-fil-A. And we tried, we went there and it was fine, but it didn't, you know, blow my socks off. And so I, I think they're above average, but not the God tier for a fast food type place that most people say they are. Given a choice for like fried chicken type stuff, I'd rather go to Popeye's. But if I lived near a Chick-fil-A, I would go there every once in a while, but I don't. So I, I don't eat there often. And this is purely talking about their food, not their politics. That's a whole nother, it's a whole nother issue. But yeah, I, I don't know. I've gotten in arguments with people. Same reason why I don't think In-N-Out Burger is the best thing since sliced bread. I think, and that's not on here because I don't think In-N-Out's typically found in malls in California. I don't know. I don't live in California. But I kind of feel like In-N-Out's a little overrated too. But that's fine. Next up, pink berry. Pink berry is frozen yogurt, right? Boy, I haven't been to a pink berry in forever. Yes. Frozen yogurt. This place was kind of part of the growing frozen yogurt craze from several years back. Kind of putting them in the mid tier of you're only going to go there for one or two things. But. I would go to, I think I would go to a pink berry before I went to a Dairy Queen. Frozen yogurt's good. I think, one, it's better for you. And I like the fact that you can put a bunch of stuff on top. See, I would put you in the middle. Middle of B tier. Filling out the, the niche things that only offer one or two specific things. That's fine. Next up, Starbucks. The quote-unquote industry standard of coffee and coffee-adjacent things. I'd never eat at Starbucks. I, I used to go to them every once in a while when I go into the office, but I don't drink coffee. So that's the main reason. So I'm going to put Starbucks on C tier. Some of their non coffee type drinks are fine and they do breakfast sandwiches and stuff. They're, they're okay. But given how common there's Starbucks friggin' everywhere, I never go there. And in a mall, I, I, Probably need to want something really specific to go to a Starbucks in a mall, but eh, C tier. Next up, Wendy's. That's interesting. I I know these are common in food courts too. I do like Wendy's a lot, so we'll put them up on S tier. We will probably have a couple things. Well, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else on this list I'd put in S tier, but. Wendy's is good. If I had a choice between Wendy's, Dairy Queen, Burger King, McDonald's, for a place I'd want to eat in a mall, I'd probably go to a Wendy's. Wendy's or McDonald's, I think. Burger King would be pretty far down the list unless there was nothing else. Uh, but yeah, I like their, their menu. Frosties are good. Their, their mix of items is good. Edward says... Who's Candace? Nice try, Edward. You're not going to get me with a D's nuts joke. Yeah, I've heard most of them. I, I used that Wendy's one on my brother not too long ago. I think he's getting wise to the fact that I think D's nuts jokes are funny. Anyway, we're putting Wendy's up on S tier. We'll see if anything else is going to occupy it. And next up, we've got KFC, the Colonel. Speaking of destroying your digestive system, I am going to put KFC on D tier. I really thought about putting them on F tier, but the reality is I'd probably go eat at a KFC if there was nothing else. I would actively leave the premises if I had no choice but to go to Sbarro. So we're going to put the Colonel down here on D tier with a little bit of an act of charity. I think KFC is pretty garbage tier, especially in a mall food court type situation. You're, you're going to get even lower quality food than you would at a standalone restaurant. But as a person who really likes fried chicken, don't get me wrong, a lot of the KFC menu tastes pretty good, but it absolutely murders, murders your digestive system. And 
I I got stuff to do. I'm, I'm a busy person. I, I can't I can't lose an entire day sitting on the toilet. So Colonel, you're going down here. Next up, Chipotle, a competitor competitor type to like Qdoba, a made on the line type of Mexican place, versus a canned menu like a Taco Bell. I'm gonna say Chipotle. Where am I gonna put you? I'm gonna put you one tier above Taco Bell just because outside of their food poisoning cases with all their contamination scandals, separate from that, I think a Chipotle menu is less likely to destroy my stomach compared to Taco Bell, which is guaranteed. So it's a, ba a really close neck and neck race and they inch them out by just a tiny, tiny bit. I would not go to either of these if a Cadoba is nearby. All right, next up, Mrs. Fields. This is the cookie place, right? Uh, pretty okay. Put them up on the gimmick tier as far as they only do cookies, I think. I don't think they do anything else. Now, I haven't even seen one of these in a mall in forever, but again, I don't go to malls. So you're going to go up on the list of, of these really specific type places. And same thing with Cinnabon. Cinnabon, although Cinnabon's going to rank a bit higher. I like Cinnabon. In fact, I'm, I'm putting them at the top of B tier. If I really want to hate myself, and uh, I'm, I'm trying not to rip off a Louis C.K. bit, but he's totally right in that people go to Cinnabon because they're willing to accept the punishment for their decisions. There is no health benefits or no you know, real reason to go and eat a giant frosting-covered cinnamon roll. But sometimes you just got to do it. And, you know, I'm not above being a gross gremlin sometimes. And when I do, I will go to Cinnamon. Maybe buy a box of half a dozen of them and spread out the self-loathing over a shorter amount of time. But they make some pretty good cinnamon rolls. I'm not going to lie. Next up, Jamba Juice. Alright, Jamba Juice is going to rate pretty high. I'm going to put you... Oh, actually, even though I know they're not healthier, it is technically a step in a healthier direction than Cinnabon. And I do like smoothies. So I'm going to put Jamba Juice up here at the top. Slightly edging out Cinnabon because there's a bit more variety you can get here. I understand that Jamba Juice smoothies are just packed with sugar and juices and whatnot. That's why they taste so good. So it's really not that much better for you, but it's closer. And their secret menu items like the, the white gummy bear are really, really good. I haven't had one of those in forever. But back when I lived near a place that had a Jamba Juice location, I was like, yeah. I hate myself less when I go to a Jamba Juice compared to Cinnabon. Let's put it that way. That's what it comes down to. Your, your degree of self-loathing based on your consumption of products. Next up, we got Johnny Rockets. I don't know how common Johnny Rockets is across the rest of the states or in the rest of the world, but these are really common as standalone restaurants in malls. That's why it's on the list. And they do like diner style burgers. Johnny Rockets is, is pretty okay. Um, I'm going to put them. Hmm. Wouldn't say they're up on the Wendy's tier. But definitely better than. Uh, I'm going to put them. Hmm. Put them on B. Hmm. It's tough because they they aren't really gimmicky, but they only have like a real specific set of burgers. So I'm gonna put them on low A. We'll leave them there for now. They're fine. We used to go to a place near near the mall at my uh my job, and we'd go there every once in a while. And food's fine. It's more sit down though. Uh, I don't. The ones we went to were more sit down, but I've seen the ones that are like food court style counter go up and order and you know take away type thing so yeah johnny rockets is, is decent burgers they're fine next up we got mcdonald's uh the empire of ronald i i can't remember what i've talked about here on stream because this was part of the fast food tier list that i did a while back 
I'm not gonna lie. There, I have a degenerate streak sometimes, and and I do like McDonald's. Would I go to them in a food court? Maybe depends on what was there. Not over a Wendy's probably, but I'm gonna say above Johnny Rockets because there are some things on the menu that I really like. Uh, Big Mac is usually my go-to. I like chicken nuggets. Uh, chicken sandwiches are good. Fries are good. Silas said McDiabetes. Yes. You know, this. Thankfully, we're not factoring health into any of this, or, or this entire list would be out the door. But. I do have a soft spot for McDonald's. The last few times I've had it ha has not destroyed my digestive system, so that's good. In the past, it'd be, it'd be every single time. Sarlat said, What if the ice cream machine is working? Uh. That's sort of an external factor. I don't normally get ice cream at McDonald's, but yeah, I, I know the meme of how their ice cream machines are never working. It turns out the reason that always breaks and why that always happens is because they're dead set on using like an ancient proprietary device that makes the ice cream and it, and it requires a lot of specific labor and things in order to fix. If they just modernized and went to a, a contemporary type of soft serve ice cream machine, it would never have that problem. But they're so dead set on keeping this archaic technology that it it requires like three surgeons and a blood sacrifice in order to fix instead of like a more modern type of machinery. That's what I've heard, which is really funny to me because they've been around for eons and they can't develop modern technology. They would they would set, they'd make more money if the ice cream machine was always working. If people could always get ice cream. They would sell more product. They'd make more money. I don't get it. Starlet said, my McDonald's got a new machine. It just needed a cool down to make ice cream from the milk they have. Oh, are they phasing in new new machinery? That's interesting. I don't know, ma'am. I know we had some folks in the chat who, who worked at McDonald's. I can't remember which ones, but I don't know if that's something being implemented across all McDonald's locations worldwide, but hopefully they figure it out because people always want ice cream and they can't get it it does frustrate people so yeah good point next up we have this is, is that the first asian place on here i think it is panda express boy panda express is garbage especially at a mall you're going down here on d tier there are things on the Panda Express menu that I like. I haven't eaten at one in probably five plus years. I don't live near any. But just like KFC, just like Taco Bell, every time I eat at a Panda Express, the machine, the, the food tastes good. You know, passable pseudo-Asian food. But it absolutely murders my digestion every time. Every time I eat at a, at a Panda Express, just like KFC or Taco Bell. I pay for it. And if I had a choice about going there versus other types of Asian places, Panda Express would be super far down on the list. It's I think it's the grease and sodium. It's it's like the grease and salt and everything in their menu just just murders me. So yeah, Panda, you're going down there. The KFC tier. Next up, we got Red Robin, and this one's an, an interesting entry because it's not a fast food place. Red Robin's a sit-down burger grill type joint. Their tagline is gourmet burgers. Sure, you know, whatever. I think their food is fine. They do bottomless fries too, I think. At least they, they used to. I'm going to put Red Robin on upper B tier. I haven't eaten one of these in forever, but... Like any other grill type place, you can get drinks and other things. It's not just burgers. So their diversity of menu is good. Their bottomless steak fries are good. And they're they're pretty okay for a sit-down burger place. But they're a little bit more of a sit-down establishment compared to everything else on the list. So it's kind of a weird inclusion. But you see Red Robins in a lot of malls. That's probably why. Most large-scale mall operations have a, a Red Robin inside, but it's still a sit-down restaurant. It's not like a takeaway type joint. 
All right, moving on. This is Sarku, Japan. You can't see the S here, but this is Sarku. I didn't realize this is like a chain across malls. I thought this was a West Coast thing. They're basically a teriyaki place. But I remember the one in the mall near where I used to go to back when I was in Earth School. And for what you would probably assume is going to be a garbage tier teriyaki joint, their food was actually pretty good for a food court place. They did a really good teriyaki chicken. I swear it was because they, they threw it on a grill with butter. But their teriyaki chicken was solid. We'd always used to go there and get stuff. It was probably my favorite joint in the entire food court. So I'm going to put Sarku up here on high B tier. Because I never tried anything else from their menu. People always used to say everything else was not great. So I'm going to put them in the middle of B tier. And I don't know. Anyone else who lives in the States can tell me if you've ever seen this at a mall in your area and have been there. Maybe it's just above average everywhere. Maybe it's below average. I don't know. But the one we went to was pretty decent. And uh, I was surprised by how good their teriyaki chicken was. All right. Next up, we've got Eat Fresh Subway. Also a mainstay of, of shopping malls. I have not been to a subway in eons, be it at a mall or a standalone location. I was of the opinion Subway was pretty mid, you know, not as horrible as people seem to think. It really does depend on a Subway. It depends on the quality of the service and staff. Some people working at Subway just do not care, and they will just you know, slap a sandwich together and give it to you, and it will be terrible. The ones I've been to have been pretty decent, so maybe I got lucky. But I'm going to put Subway at the top of C tier. It's It's okay. Sandwich wise, there are other places I'd rather go to. But I had things I, I could get at the subway. It's fine. Uh, just not high tier. And in a mall, it would not be high on my list of places to go because you can find them everywhere. Iconic says, Got to go. Sorry I couldn't stay longer. Much love. Oh, no worries, Iconic. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out and listening to my bad takes on food. If you feel so inclined, feel free to create your own tier list and, and send them over to me. I'm always interested to hear what people think. Uh, but yeah, I will catch you in the next stream, my dude. Have yourself a good rest of your day today. All right, we are getting towards the end of the list here, which is gonna work out pretty well for for our time here last one on the list is shake shack and before my last trip i had never eaten at a shake shack and i can say that i've now experienced shake shack food it was not at a mall so i'm going to kind of project their my experience with their menu but shake shack was pretty good it was a little bit tough to recall what i ate um you can draw your own conclusions from there, but it was very good. It reminded me a lot of Five Guys, and we had burgers. We had a mix of burgers and stuff, and uh, it was good. It was definitely above average. Uh, good flavor and quality, everything. A little on the greasy side, but I mean, nothing outside of like a, fry, a Five Guys burger, which is usually pretty greasy. So I'm going to say Shake Shack is up here on A tier. I've, I'll have to update this if I ever try their in-mall locations, which I understand it's pretty common. They've got like the, the takeaway versions of their restaurants in malls. But then they've got the standalone ones too. They're just not super common. Like they don't have any in my state. I, I don't think there's any Shake Shacks in my area. But it was good. I, I say I was pretty, pretty impressed from what I remember. And so looking at this, we have our list of mall food interesting very specific list of of places i think the the biggest loser here on the list for well-known properties is probably sabaro again i don't know why anyone would, would eat there but bringing up the rear shortly after that barely barely above that in what i consider quality kfc and the panda you know panda both of these are occupying the uh, Raku's digestive system suffers catastrophic effects. 
I could say that about KFC, I could say that about Panda, and I could say that about Taco Bell. The rest of the things on the list, and eh, maybe not so much. The rest of C tier is filled out by what I consider kind of average places. Places I wouldn't avoid, but also wouldn't go out of my way to, to pay money for just because there's got to be better choices available. B tier is filled out with a more niche set of places and some places that I think are above average. All right. So like Sarku, Red Robin, I consider above average and everything else on the list is all very specific. You know, Jamba Juice pretty much only does smoothies. Cinnabon only does cinnamon buns. Um, Krispy Kreme only serves guilt. And so these are all places I think are real specific, but you're not going to really go to them for anything other than like the one or two things they're known for. Right? A tier. Now we're getting to the more, these are places I would prioritize if I was faced with a bunch of choices in a mall food court. You know, Popeye's chicken is pretty good fried chicken. Uh, Chick-fil-A is definitely noteworthy chicken sandwiches and, and the like. And Qdoba would be my standout favorite of the Mexican places on the list here. And, you know, McDonald's accordingly. And Shake Shack, Johnny Rockets, all that. Burger joints. Interestingly enough, the only standout at S tier we've got is Wendy's. There's some other places I think I would put pretty high up on the list here if they were included. Like five guys would be at the top and that's my favorite burger place. Uh, there's some some others that I'm probably missing that are, are pretty common and would stand out as far as choices in a mall food court, you know. But for the sake of this list, I think we've got a pretty good spread here. I have no idea if this list is con controversial. We'll see. Uh, again, I, I welcome the discussion of... of what people's choices are, especially if they have these these franchises in their area. But I think that will do it for today's list of tier lists. I have a third one on here that I'm going to bookmark, and we'll do this at a later date. And it's a it's it's kind of connected to the last one we did, and it's fast food sauces kind of a shorter list and a lot of them are kind of specific to a couple different properties there's not a, a big variety here but uh, I'll bookmark this one for later this might be a good warm-up tier list for a future stream because I see like Burger King I could see McDonald's in here Chick-fil-a Taco Bell so it's not not a huge spread of of different places but just well-known sauces so we'll 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 do this one later Oh, I also noticed there's no Jack in the Box. Isn't Jack in the Box? Don't they have those in malls? I don't know. That one would be up on B tier. Jack in the Box is pretty all right. But before we jump off for today, let me go check out the homie list and see who's online. And we can go and visit before we, we head out. Uh, let's see. Aerospawn Jabberwock is doing Bioshock Infinite. Okay. Maybe we can go rate Eris. I haven't, I haven't been over there to see them in a while. So let me pause everything here. And we will go ahead and go to Outro. And we will go head over and raid. So I think it was fun to get back to tier lists. I do want to do this a little more frequently just because it's a fun way to sort of break up the content and then also talk with all of you about my terrible thoughts and things. So I'll dig up some more tier lists and put together another session's worth, and we will do that in the future. But until then, we will wrap up for today. Uh, we'll be back on Sunday afternoon, I believe. We'll be doing a drawing stream. And I have no idea what I'm going to do then, so I'll figure it out. But until then, thanks again for, to everybody who came and hung out. And I will see you folks in the next one. Have yourselves a good evening.